at the Los Angeles Coliseum. It's Christopher Mad Dog Russo. I don't know what you can't understand about this. It's pretty obvious. These two icons will put their talents to the test each week as they go head to head and duke it out for gridiron supremacy. You can hear My Guys in the Desert with Brent Musburger weekdays from 6 to 8 Eastern on the Vegas Stats and Information Network, Sirius XM 204. Give me anybody but the Patriots and who's playing the Browns. You know what I mean? And you can hear Christopher Mad Dog Russo weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Mad Dog Sports Radio, Sirius XM 82. I am going to give you a Titan Panthers Super Bowl. The lines are moving and the money is flying. Show me the money! Let the battle begin. Here they are. It's Mad Dog and Musburger. Now, we missed Brent last week, the great Musburger, his little pal there, who is yeah. Vinny. Uh, we're going to talk to him, too, today on our big show. Brent, how are you, buddy? Okay? I am fine, Mad Dog. How's that weather outside in the Twin Cities? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Vinny, how are you? Minus three degrees, Brent. Minus hey, three degrees. Hey, it's so oh, in Vegas, baby. And we have a room <laughs> reserved for you. You've whipped me this year. Come on. The Mad Dog should be in Vegas. I will be there. I got to get these shows. Brent, did you cover newspaper or radio? Did you cover the first Super Bowl or not? I did. I did indeed for Chicago's American Super Bowl one. The Los Angeles Coliseum. What a show. So you were there for that. All right. What was the first year that you covered it for CBS and the NFL today? Well, let's see. I think it would have been down in Miami. Would that have been Super Bowl X? Phyllis George. Oh, that late. That took Irving a while. Ross. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, Joe Namath was our guest. And we were on a boat for the first hour of the show. We had a bomb scare. Uh, we survived that. And I uh, got to the arena and watched Lynn Swan make great catches. Oh, he was great. Yeah, a lot of those catches didn't mean much, but they were certainly acrobatic enough. When did you notice, Brent, was it after Namath? When did you notice that this had caught on with the American public? Super Bowl One did not. When did Brent notice that? After Super Bowl Three, uh, Joe Namath made the Super Bowl. Uh, what it became, and then uh, they took it from there. But the most important Super Bowl played was number three because it brought credibility to the American Football League and soon to become the American Football Conference. Uh, Namus Guarantee happened to be at the Country Club that Thursday night with Dave Anderson of the New and York And you were Times. there. You were there, right? Weren't you there for that, Brent? Yeah, we were. We were there. And it was rather matter-of-factly. Uh, you know, it wasn't Joe out there bragging or full of scotch or anything. Uh, full disclosure, I think he had at least one glass that night on Thursday. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but his performance was uh, absolutely uh, magnificent. And I had the, uh, the pleasure or the pain, depending on your point of view, I was standing on a photo deck uh, next to the great Howard Cosell. So I was his one-person audience, and he would broadcast to me uh, frequently how the Baltimore Colts were choking and Joe Willie Namath was going to win the Super Bowl. Wow, so Howard, Howard actually believed in the Jets. Well, he was from New York. He probably was wrapped up in him. He believed in the Jets in that game, huh, Brent? Yeah, he hated the New York Giants and the Maras in particular because— Why did he—I didn't know that. Why did no, Howard hate the Maras? They did not want Mar- him around as a broadcaster in any way whatsoever. And he was much closer to the uh, New York Jets. He didn't like uh, old school— National Football League, he, uh, he liked the young and the upstart. They were his buddies, but, of course, they needed publicity, so they would, they would seek out Howard. But he was a huge, huge Jet fan, no doubt about it. And Lombardi liked Cosell. I've seen Lombardi on Cosell, so he was all guard. How come he didn't like so Lombardi? Didn't Vince like Howard? Brand or no? No, he liked him a lot. In fact, the people who knew him uh, inside the game, Mad Dog, uh, they were they were very fond of Howard. It was more the ownership uh, who didn't like him because he was critical of management and owner, ownership. Okay, he didn't level all of his criticism just at the athletes or the coaches. Uh, he would take on franchise ownership for putting a bad product on the field. No, he he got along very well with with a lot of athletes. He was in his day, in his heyday, he was great company. Uh, toward the end, he was an enormous bore. <laughs> 
and you would go to the other side of the street to avoid him. But when he was really at the top of his game, he was great fun to hang around with. Uh, how was Lombardi there after Super Bowl One? Was he very disparaging of the Chiefs, Brent? You were probably right next to him in the locker room. Let me get a little sense about that. Go ahead. Well, I'll tell you what was interesting about Lombardi for Super Bowl One. He hid the team out in Santa Barbara. Yeah, so I know that. Yeah. we did not have any access. We had access to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, they were in Long Beach training, and Hank Stram was his usual affable self, and we got to know all of the Chiefs. I would say after Super Bowl one that Lombardi was relieved uh, more than anything else. Uh, he knew that the NFL had to win that game, uh, that their stature and their prestige was on the line, uh, and he took full responsibility for it, and they came through. One little interesting anecdote about Super Bowl I, uh, Mad Dog, is that the second half had two kickoffs. That's right. Right, I heard. Yep, yeah. Okay, because NBC and CBS both were broadcasting. NBC was not out in time, and so they kicked off a second time. They had the referee throw a flag and some bogus thing, and we'll kick over, and, and on they went. Uh, the Chiefs. They handled themselves well, and of course, Max McGee, the story is legendary, good buddy of mine. Uh, he didn't think he was going to play at all, but an injury forced him in. He had stayed up well past Lombardi's curfew. In fact, he was so late, he didn't even bother to go back to the hotel. But he uh, made that one-handed grab behind his back, uh, and he was a star of Super Bowl I, and it was a great story coming out of there. All of us expected, all of us expected the Packers to win. Uh, we tended to be uh, more from the NFL cities than from the AFL cities. So we weren't surprised by the outcome. But I'm going to tell you right now, the Chiefs put up a good, a good battle. They, yeah, uh, played, better in a game, played better in a game than people give them credit for. 100% absolutely, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. What happened late, though, was the hammer. Freddie Williamson had popped off, and he became a big, big target. So that the entire, I was down on the sideline getting ready to go into the locker room working for an afternoon paper. I was going down to get quotes. And when Williamson went down in a heap on the field, I mean, they were ecstatic on the Green Bay sideline. The hammer's down. We got the hammer. The hammer's out. Because he had popped off about how badly they were going to beat the Packers, et cetera, et cetera. Freddie was a pretty good football player, uh, but his uh, mouth got in his way sometimes, if you know what I mean. But the Packers were ecstatic when he went down. Uh, and Vinny, I tell you, I don't know when the big betting came in the Super Bowl. You want to say it's Super Bowl three? Everybody betting the Jets eighteen and a half. When did the big betting uh, start, as far as these Super Bowls are concerned? Probably the first one, maybe not as much, but after Super Bowl three, everybody bet the game, correct? Yeah, yeah, definitely, Chris. It started to accelerate. I'll tell you the one that really vaulted. It was uh, Super nineteen seventy nine. So Super Bowl thirteen. What we refer to here is Black Sunday, and the reason we call it Black Sunday is if you remember the Steelers and the Cowboys. The game ended on four. Pittsburgh 35-31. And a noteworthy casino here in town posted odds. If you wanted to uh, wanted to lay the, uh, the underdog, okay, you could lay the Steelers three and a half, but if you wanted to bet the Cowboys, you could take four and a half. And uh, it was the Stardust Hotel at the time, a gentleman by the name of Frank Rosenthal, and uh, he posted it. And uh, lo and behold, of course, the game did fall for Jackie uh, So uh, Jackie people playing Smith. at Vinny, people playing yeah. in the middle the whole day for crying yes. out loud. Yep, the whole weekend. Now, remember this. It was pretty devastating then, but not nearly the handle. Chris, last year we handled $138.5 million statewide. If something like that were to happen today, I can't tell you how devastating that would be to the books. It would be uh, uh, just a, an onslaught. So you think about it, that's there. So it got so much publicity that from then on, Super Bowl wagering became so popular. It's the single most wagered on event of the year here in the state of Nevada. Wow, so that one, everybody won money. They go all excited. Now, you did 138 yep. last year. Uh, how much of it is props and how much of it is the game and how much of it is the over and the under? Let me hear about that. Great question. When you, you just look at the props, so what we'll incorporate uh, as part of the game is the game itself, the point spread, the money line on the game. So without the points, you bet either side, lay or take the, uh, lay the favorite or take the underdog. And of course, uh, you mentioned it, the, the over and under, which this year sits at now uh, 48, uh, 47, yeah, 48 and a half. But about well, half of it, so last year, about half of it, so about uh, $65 million last year. Props have become so popular. It averages about half, 
And depending on the property, it could be as low as 45. It could be as high as 60% is on the proposition bets. Well, so I did three bets. I'll tell Brent what they are in a minute. We want to get Brent's pick in. That's the most important thing. We'll get the music going. Brent will go first. We both were 0-2 last week uh, in the championship games. Uh, Brent's been a guest all year. He's been a great soldier. So he'll make the first selection. Brent, it's the Eagles. We're going to play it at 4.5. You want to play the over-under? That's up to you. You go first as far as Eagles and Pats are concerned. Take it away. I will take under 48.5. That'll be my, my first pick, Mad Dog. Uh, I believe that the Eagle defense is superb. The Patriots uh, have not pulled away except for last year. That was the biggest margin of victory, the six points they scored in overtime, believe it or not, in all of Tom Brady's appearances. Uh, Instead, they were a shorter number. I'm going to go under 48 and a half between the Eagles and the Patriots. Uh, I agree with you 1,000%. I think this game is going to be in the low 40s at best. If you beat the Patriots in playoff games or Super Bowls, they have trouble scoring 20, 20 to 18 to Denver, 26, 16 to Denver. The Giants beat them 17, 14, then 21, 17. It's usually low scoring when you beat them. So Brent, I'm with you. I will go under 48 and a half as well. Now the game, Brent, minus four and a half. Let me hear your thoughts. Take it away. I'm gonna take the Philadelphia Eagles because of the hook. Uh, I predict a 24-20 win by the Patriots. Uh, As long as I can get that extra something, I know that Super Bowls aren't normally decided by point spreads, but I'm going to take the underdog at four and a half. But I do believe the Patriots have enough firepower and they've got Mr. Brady and they will in the end win this game, maybe by uh, only a field goal. Uh, I will take the Eagles too. I'm going to take them out right. Now, I took the four and a half because I'm with Brent. I like that extra half a point. It went down from six to four and a half. I didn't want it to go to four, so I took it last night. And I take the four and a half. I'm with Brent on that. I think a low-scoring game. Uh, I will just, you know, I could see the Patriots winning. I'm not going to sit there and tell you. I convinced that Philadelphia will win. But I want to root for Philly. I got Patriot fatigue, as we all know. I'll go. And my buddy Pat Smith is a huge Eagle fan. I play tennis with him every sunny summer at Manilokin. He lets me play for free in those clay courts. He gives me lessons. He gets the double game set up. So in honor of him, Brent, I, and he picked, he gave me a score Monday. So I'll stick with it. Philly 23 and the Patriots 20. So I'll go outright. I'll go the Eagles. Now you have some prop bets. I did three prop bets, which I'll give to Vinny in a sec. You got four prop bets that you like. Let me hear him for a sec. Go ahead. Well, there's one I always love to bet. That's the national anthem. And the over-under is always at two minutes. We have Pink singing the national anthem. So I will ask you, do you like over or under two minutes on the national anthem? Boy, I have no idea. I say, oh, what's the, was it minus 110 both ways? I'll take the over with the national anthem. Go ahead. So both of us agree because I always go over if I think the singer is apt to turn it into a concert. I think Pink will do that. Okay, now, Saturday night, Steph Curry is in Denver, okay, with the Golden State Warriors. They, the Warriors do not play on Super Sunday. So Steph Curry's three-point baskets in Colorado Saturday night versus the total touchdowns, total touchdowns by the Patriots and the Eagles on Sunday's Super Bowl. Mad Dog, tee it up. Well, that's interesting. I'll give them six threes. That means I got to hope for seven touchdowns. I got it 23-20. I'm going to have to go Curry's three-point basket some more. I'll say Curry. And Denver plays no defense. They gave up 124 points last night. I'll say Curry's baskets more than the touchdowns on Sunday. All right. So the dog and I agree on the first two. Now, Mad Dog, will the Patriots score in the first quarter? They are 0 for 7 under Brady in the seven Super Bowls that he has started at quarterback. They have not scored a single point in the first quarter. Will the Patriots break through and score in the first quarter against the Eagles? Absolutely no way. If they win the toss, they will defer. And I think the Eagles win the toss, they take the ball. They're not going to give Brady an extra possession. So from that perspective, that means that that first drive goes to Philly. That means the Patriots only might have one possession in the quarter. And because I think the Eagles will get it first no matter who wins the flip, I will say the Pats will not score in quarter number one. 
Okay, we've got action. (laughs) (laughs) Just because somebody's got to take the other side sometime. Okay, Mad Dog, I'm going to say they break through with a Goskowski 35-yard field goal. It breaks down on the third and eight. They don't get it. They settle for the field goal, and the Patriots finally score in the first quarter of a Super Bowl game behind Tom Brady. All right, one more one, Brent. What's the last one? Let me hear. Go ahead. All right. Who will attempt more passes in this game, Tom Brady or Nick Foles? I'm going to have to say Brady. Uh, I don't think because anybody trails and somebody's way behind, I think that Foles has those two running backs. I think they'd be a little conservative maybe at times. Brady will throw to the running backs while Foles will hand off to the running backs. So I think Brady will throw more passes than Foles will. How about that? I I totally agree with Mad Dog. I think that the Eagles will come to run, and I don't think the Patriots will waste much time against that Eagle defensive front. He'll spread the ball around his playmakers. He's got the great Gronk back out there. James White, one of the heroes, of course, a year ago. So I believe, too, that it will be Tom Brady who will throw the most passes. So come on, give me a first quarter point. I got the dog on one prop. <laughs> <laughs> now, Vinny, to you, I did three prop bets. I want to hear your thoughts on it. The first one, I did all Eagles as I want them to win. Over one and a half field goals. In Philadelphia, I took the over. Do you like it or not like it? I like it. I think uh, with, with the kicker they have in a close game, yep, over one and a half. All you need is two. All right, that's the first one. Second one, I took Jeffrey over 51 and a half yards receiving. I think it only takes one big play. I think they take a couple of shots. Uh, good field conditions. I'll take Jeffrey over 51 and a half yards. You like it or don't like it? Um, I'm not particularly crazy about it, only because of this reason. It, it, he's going to be a primary receiver, and if there's pressure on – here's what you need to win that bet. You have to make sure that Foles is not under duress. I understand, but I think they'll take away the tight end, which will give him better chances. And then All lastly, right. I took a Jai over 58 and a half yards yard running. Like it or dislike it? I like it. He's their guy. He's the one. They have to play a ball control game. They don't want to get into a shootout. He's going to be the guy that keeps them close. Brent, you like those three or not? I have to like them. You whipped my butt this year. <laughs> of course I like the man. Like, get on those props, everybody. <laughs> Brent, you are something. Vinny, you've been a tremendous help. Brent, you know how much I love you. Well, we will get together in the course of the spring. And when I get my wife out to Vegas, on the house, I'll have some fun, we'll have some fun, you and me. Okay, pal? Oh, no. We will definitely bring her out here. And by the way, Mad Dog, don't forget, Valentine's Day is coming, so go to Sherry's Berries, okay? Make sure you go there, because they'll deliver it right to your house. They've got great chocolates and flowers. See you later, my friend. <laughs> Listen to Brent. Oh, baby. Lots to still do. We're getting warmed up. You're going to hear from the Spanoses later on.